Welcome back. All right, so one topic that comes up a lot on the channel is draft steals, and it comes up in general anyways, right? We are, we are always impressed with teams that draft well, thus my, my Tampa Bay jersey, and also there's a prominent Tampa Bay Lightning player who's on this list. So looking at draft steals, to me, they have to be outside the first round. So if it's a number 13, number 15, number 25 pick, I will, t I will do a video where I look at late first round draft steals, but this is going to be in the second round and beyond. And it's from the drafts of 2014 through to 2017, because the 2018 draft doesn't have that star quality outside the first round, at least not yet. It's still early enough that I guess that, that could develop, right? Uh, and then drafts after that, just there's a lot of inconclusive. Uh, so just basically, you know, the, the, the track record is not really established yet. 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, your guess is as good as mine. And of course, we're about to have the 2023 draft. So ranking these 1 through 10, and I've ranked them prior, um, I've got goaltenders at 9 and 10. And there's a reason, because goaltenders are hard to predict. So at number 10 on the board, uh, in 2014, drafted 78th overall by the New York Islanders, Ilya Sorokin. So it's been nine years since Sorokin was drafted by the New York Islanders. I think Islander fans are quite happy with Sorokin's work, rightfully so. He's one of, if not the best goalie in the league. And again, it depends on what criteria you use and how, how you, you view the information that's out there, the stats and everything. But yeah, Sorokin, number 10 on the board and number nine, also a goaltender. Drafted in 2014 as well. Drafted 118th overall by the New York Rangers. And that's what makes this one really interesting, too. Because they're drafted the same year, they're in the same division, and at some point, Shesterkin and Sorokin are going to meet in the playoffs, and it will be glorious. So, Igor Shesterkin has been absolutely fantastic. Had a, a career year last year and followed it up this year with another good year. And so, yeah, Shesterkin and Sorokin, to me, that's 9 and 10. And again, I, I would have bumped him up a little bit higher, but goaltenders are tough to project. project. Um, I will talk about goaltenders in the upcoming 2023 draft over the coming days. Because again, goaltenders, it can be really difficult to predict when a goaltender's 18, which ones are going to be good when they're 23, 24, 25. Uh, number 8 on the board. In 2016, so this was the first year that, that I had, uh, I was doing videos on the channel, and drafted third overall, or 39th overall in 2016, Alex Dabrinkat. So right now, Dabrinkat, of course, at kind of at an impasse with the Ottawa Senators, very likely to be moved. Dabrinkit's an excellent goal scorer. <clears throat> I think he's a good all-around player, too. I think he's got good passing skill. He's a, he's just he's a really solid talent. Uh, whether it's in Ottawa or somewhere else, I think he will be a solid top six forward for at least the next decade. I'll say at least the next decade. And, yeah, um, I've been a fan of his, and I remember in 2016 looking at that draft and saying that looked like a steal. That Dabrinkit had fallen in the draft because of his size. So that's something I, I may take a look at and do a list video of as well. But yeah, Dabrinkit's number eight for me. Number seven, also in 2016, drafted number 162 overall by the New Jersey Devils. Jesper Bratt. Now, I had debated about whether to have Dabrinkit ahead of Bratt because I think as a goal scorer, Dabrinkit's ahead of him. But... The fact that it's a number 162 pick where New Jersey picks up Bratt, to me that uh, that that puts that one at number 7 instead of number 8. But if you want to flip them, you can. Uh, but yeah, Bratt's fantastic. Of course, he's got a nice, expensive contract. These guys are all paid. Sorokin's getting paid next year. I believe he's got one year left on his contract. So yeah, Bratt, uh, with a nice long-term extension out with the New Jersey Devils, he's going to be there for a very, very long time. Uh, another solid top six forward in the NHL. And I will say, at 162nd overall, you don't expect that. And this is why, when I talk about teams needing extra draft picks, this is the part of the reason why. The more draft picks you have, the more chance you, the better chance you have of acquiring uh, a draft pick late, who may end up being a home run for your team and may make you look really smart. Uh, number six on the board, so we get to the halfway mark with this. And it was 2016. Oh, it's the number 66 pick. 
This is one of those happy accidents. Uh, sixth pick, or sixth overall, is number 66. Uh, and drafted by Calgary originally. Although he made it clear he wasn't signing in Calgary. They, signed, they, they drafted Adam Fox at 66th. He then gets moved to Carolina. Tells Carolina, I'm not signing here either. His rights are moved to the Rangers. He signs with the Rangers. He was never going anywhere else. Adam Fox, uh, one of the best defensemen in the, in the National Hockey League. Uh, legitimately could be in the running for Norris for the next 10 years because, again, these are younger players, right? Uh, Fox is worth every penny that the Rangers pay to him. I understand why the Flames took him in 66 when they did uh, and tried to talk him into coming over to Calgary and playing there. He wasn't willing, and Ranger fans probably quite happy about that. Good, he stuck to his guns, right? Because when the player wants to play for your team, you're always kind of happy he stuck to his guns and, and made it happen. Uh, number five on the board... Uh, so now we get to the 2017 draft. And drafted 39th overall by Dallas. It's not the last time you're going to see a Dallas player on the board either. So again, if you want to look at Jason Robertson and say, well, I don't think he's as impressive as Adam Fox, you can, you can switch him. I, I'm fine with that. But to me, Jason Robertson, one of the better goal scorers in the NHL already, he had a fantastic first half. If he can project that over a full 82 games to play that way the whole season, maybe pace himself a little bit better in the first half and pick up his second half, he could be a 50-goal scorer uh, easily. Uh, Robertson makes it look easy when things are going well for him. We saw in the playoffs some inconsistent play here and there. But young players struggling in their first couple of playoffs, not something that's all that unusual or outside of the realm of possibility. And I'm excited about the future in Dallas with Robertson, who I think is going to eventually be the captain there, unless the other Dallas star that's going to show up on this list ends up being there instead of him. So, uh, number four on the board, drafted in 2015, which is an absolutely stacked draft. Uh, the number 49 pick. Hey, look, it's Dallas again. So, yeah, I could see Rope Hintz ending up being a, a, a captain in Dallas. Yep. Uh, Haskinen, Hintz, Robertson. You really can't go wrong with these guys. This is the core of the Dallas Stars going forward. And, of course, Ottinger and Nett. I didn't give Ottinger a spot in the top 10 because he's a first-round pick. So, again, late first-round picks will get their own video at some other point. I wanted to restrict this to outside of the first round. Uh, Rope Hintz being 49th overall. Kind of a steal there. Again, the 2015 draft is ridiculous in its depth and its star power. Uh, we will get into other 2015 picks. There are, of the picks that are remaining, yeah, 2015 is kind of prominent in there. So, number three on the board is also from 2015. And... I need to make sure that I'm doing this the same way I did all of the others because that's just how it has to work. So it's number 35 pick in 2015. I'm sure there are a lot of people watching who are going to know what name I'm writing on the board, but that's okay. I'll still, I'll get it done. Uh, even though I have a bunch of erasers, my, my instinct is still to try erasing it with my finger. I know it's a bad habit. Uh, but number 35 in 2015, Carolina drafts Sebastian Ajo. He's due for a raise next year. And and it, at the very least, the same contract he's getting currently, I would think, is where the starting point would be. Uh, but Ajo's a star. And I think if Carolina loosens the reins a little bit on him and lets him uh, go to his max creative, creatively, uh, offensively, I think Ajo's numbers will go up. I think he could be a 90-point producer in the National Hockey League year upon year. Um, outside chance at 100 points maybe, considering scoring's up right now, but at least 90 points I think Ajo can do that. I also think Svechnikov could score 40 to 50 goals, again, if, if Carolina played that style of hockey. But Ajo is absolutely legit. That's why I have him ahead of the two Dallas Stars players, even though his numbers, when you look at it offensively, might end up being kind of disappointing. Uh, number two on the list, and I went back and forth on this. So you guys can let me know in the comment section below who you think belongs at number number one. So number two, drafted 135th in 2015 by the Minnesota Wild. Uh, 
Kirill the Thrill. Kirill Kaprizov in Minnesota, 135th. And part of the reason he ends up going there, they weren't sure when he'd come over, yada, 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 all this fun stuff. And, uh, yeah, he was worth the wait for Minnesota. Absolutely fantastic player and just a genius move to pick him up. And, again, it shows that when we get past the first round on in, in the, on, on Thursday and then we get into the second round and beyond on, on Friday or, no, Wednesday. It's Wednesday's the first round, Thursday's the rest of the rounds. Anyways, you guys know 20th, 29th. Uh, but, yeah, Kirill Kaprizov is one of those ones that would have been kind of just, you know, looked at and, well, yeah, they draft this Russian, we'll see what he can do. This is the thing. You know, you never know. Those late draft picks can come back and, and look like brilliant moves, as it was in Minnesota's case with Kaprizov. Now, I could argue Kaprizov at number one, and I thought about it. So I'm going to write up number one here, which is from 2014, number 79 overall pick by the Tampa Bay Lightning, thus the Lightning jersey. Braden Point. Uh, Braden Point, back-to-back -back Stanley Cup rings, uh, and, and a key player on two Stanley Cup winners in Tampa, and a focal point of a team that's been at or near the top of the league for a long time. So that's why I give Braden Point the nod ahead of Kirill Kaprizov, even though it's 79th. Well, that's a steal. 135th for Kaprizov is ridiculous. So again, if you want to argue for Kaprizov as number one instead of Point, I'm not going to argue that that wouldn't work. But for my list and and for what I was looking at here, I thought, no, Point gets number one. He's got the back-to-back -back cup rings. He's shown he can do it in the playoffs. Kaprizov's a dynamic forward. He will do it in the playoffs, has not yet. Uh, Aho has done it in the playoffs and is sensational. And of course, with the Dallas players, um, they're still figuring things out, but it's exciting. It's an exciting time. So there you go. They ended up being from 2014 to 2017. Again, I didn't see the star power with 2018 players, and I didn't see anybody 2018 or later that I thought could bump out Sorokin and Shesterkin. So it's a tough list, but we'll see who the, who the steals are. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Who from the more recent drafts? 2020, 2021, 2022, ends up being on a list like this, say, three, four years from now. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.